Um, yeah, hello. So what is this? That's the question. It was a test and uh, I feel miserably, but I'm not sure why. I don't get it. So it's a long membrane, as you can see, a normal planar magnetic membrane, but it's glued to two frames. And now the idea is I'll play this alone and measure it, which is impossible because, well, the second one is attached. Um, play, uh, play it, or at least measure it, see how loud it is. Then I add another frame, which makes this one push-pull, like this. Uh, oh, ugh, all the way around, like this. It makes it push-pull. I'm not gonna screw it in right now, but... And you will gain 6 dB. Now the idea was mostly because I did this with uh, electrostatic tweeters once or four times or five times. The idea was to make to create a double membrane. So this is going over here. It doesn't want to be there, but makes this one push pull. So that means that the same magnet poles on this side are here that's why it doesn't want to be together but that's the way you make a push pull and that also means that on the other side like this side every magnet is reversed so let's say that this is a north pole then this is a north pole as well and they don't want to stick together that means that this one is a south south pole and north south north south <clears throat> now the idea was I flip this part over which has also magnets that repel these which creates a second membrane in a push-pull configuration and I'll show you the measurement of this one in push-pull it's right here or maybe I'll start off this one in normal mode, like not push pull, single ended. And I attach this piece, which is hard. Then you get this. And then finally, I attach this floppy thing here. Whoops. Not like that, but well, the good way around like this you see it repels and then we have a double push pull one membrane behind the other one and with the ESLs I gained 6 dB or something quite a lot uh, here's the measurement compared to the normal push pull that only uses this part and it's the same so I don't know something goes wrong So the magnets are correct, it is repelling. So this one is repelling and this one is just repelling. And the magnets are swapped on this side. So the coil goes down instead of up. So it is all correct. I don't know, because if I play it like this, like this one standing tall as well, this one will be out of phase. So only when I swap it over like this, it is in phase, at least with this thing in between. But somehow it doesn't add up. It might be the weight. I don't know. There's something weird going on. So this whole idea is not working this time. With the ESLs, it worked. But I must say, those membranes are like a gazillion times thinner. 
This is a rather thick captain. I don't know, 40 or something. Then you got 15 micron of aluminium foil, which is not helping, I guess. I don't know. If you compare it to a tweeter that I made once, this is a, a later spin-off. So this is a electrostatic tweeter. So this one is, is a stator. Spacer, spacer, stator. So the stators are conductive. So they're in this case PCB material. Plus, uh, minus. Then we got another spacer, another spacer, and then we got the last stator. So this thing is a sandwich of a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. This stator is also plus. It's the same, it's connected to the same thing as the front one. And here's a membrane and here's a membrane in between those spacers. Now you could imagine if you statically charge this membrane and this membrane that they will move, this one will move in this direction and this one will move in this direction because there's a minus or a, a negative stator I mean, it's not DC, I mean, it changes over time, but <laughs> this is the only way I can just tell you how it works. We'll move in the other direction, which will be completely out of phase, so it doesn't add up, it doesn't work. I mean, if it will be a perfect thing, then the net result will be 0 dB, which is not the case. I mean, there's also, well, it never happens. You will hear something, but it's not very loud. To fix this, um, this membrane is charged in a certain way. It's either positively charged or negatively charged. So in this case I charge this one negative and this one positive. What will happen, it will reverse the movement. So now they both move in the same direction and weirdly enough every time you double the amount of foils it adds plus 6 dB and uh, well I don't know why but that's what I measure it might be plus 3 dB and the fact that my transformer is doing something I don't know but that's what I ended up with so that's a nice win. So that's what I tried with this uh, planar magnetic version and then somehow it doesn't work at all. Now I must say, and you can also see it in the measurements, those, this foil only goes down to 100 hertz or 1000 hertz, sorry. Uh, and since the foil is so heavy, uh, like, like, 50 times heavier than the foil I used here, something like this, uh, it might not add up above 1k, which is kind of useless for such a tweeter because, well, <laughs> it's just not useless, uh, useful. So yeah, maybe you got some ideas about that, because uh, I, I was like, what the fuck? Why is it not adding up? It's not doing anything. So maybe this doesn't work at all. Or I might just get my hat like... I fucked it up with some direction of either the magnetic field or the current direction. When I use the, what is it, left hand, right hand rule. Right hand rule, I believe. My hat spins. And either way, for me, <laughs> at the moment, it just doesn't work. And I even tested it like 
you know, putting this one up so they both play and then the output is less because this one is out of phase, which it should be. That's why I flip it over and it should be in phase. So I believe it was in phase, so that is correct. It just doesn't add up, at least not above one kilohertz. Maybe it does in the low end, but of course it's a very small panel, so there is no low end. So that was a waste of time, but uh, yeah. <sighs> so that's one thing. And then I was, uh, but that's maybe another video. I was thinking about, am I gonna use rubber magnets in my next panel or am I gonna spend a little bit more and use ferrites? So it's kind of a big calculation, uh, or at least it's, you know, it has downsides and, uh, well, a few downsides and a, and a few uh, pros or cons, pros and cons. I don't know. Magnetic field is much stronger, of course. It's much heavier. I don't. I don't mind. It does mean that I can make the frame that holds the mylar out of wood, which is a little bit cheaper, I guess, than cheaper and easier to produce than uh, using HPL. By the way, I asked another plate of this material. And Abbott, the the Italian company that produces it, only wants to send two of those plates or sheets that are like three meter long, minimal. <laughs> and I thought one was already expensive, but even the price increased. So now they only want to deliver it if I buy <laughs> 480 euros of this material. It's amazing, but I do need it somehow. So I'm not sure what to do yet. I mean, I don't, that's a huge amount of money. I don't, I don't have that mon money. I might be able to get it, but this is insane. Really insane. I'll have to look around if I can get it somewhere else because that, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> Anyhow, Using wood as a frame is uh, cheaper than uh, using uh, strips of this. If you just use strips, it's quite economically, uh, economically viable, but still. Uh, if I use like ferrite magnets, uh, the, the whole bill, or at least the magnet structure will be like 50 euros a piece more expensive than the rubber magnet. So uh, around twice as expensive. Now the question is how much more dBs I get out of it uh, in terms of efficiency or yeah in terms of efficiency so I can either go for efficiency or increase the X mix X max a little bit so I can decrease the resonance so it goes place a little bit lower who knows I might have to think that through Anyhow, this was uh, a experiment that does not work for a planar magnetic with such a hefty, thick membrane, apparently. Although, you know, one of the membranes perfectly reached 20K. I don't know what it is. But um, I know mylar can be acoustically transparent if it's light enough, so that might be the problem. Maybe this one was more working like an isobaric woofer or a tweeter, so it has uh, a bit more punch, but it doesn't add up in efficiency. Uh, and the fun thing about the ESL is the material is so light, it, it's almost, for the sound at least, it's almost not there. Just like a quad uses uh, a piece of three or four, or four micron foil in front of their ESL 63, on the front and back side and you can still hear the music perfectly fine uh, and in my ESL stacked version that piece was even driven so it adds up I think that might be the reason I'll post this on DIY audio as well and hopefully Bolsert will um, 
chip in because I'm pretty sure he he knows this stuff. This guy is awesome, so good with numbers especially. But I mean, I tested it, but I can't wrap my head around it why it doesn't work. I can just guess why it doesn't work. <laughs> well, see you next time. Bye-bye.